as the Philadelphia offense struggles to get itself in gear in the red zone, the fan base, especially guys inside of this community, have grown loud with their calls for all-pro running back Derrick Henry. I'm receiving a lot of requests here, such as Cameron. A Gate, can you make a video of Derrick Henry would actually be a good fit for the Eagles offense? I got you guys. Let's get into this. Let's talk Derrick Henry. I'll tell you where I think his production will be at at this stage inside of his NFL career. And I'm going to be honest with you. I see a lot of people that think he's cooked. I disagree. I disagree by the numbers. All right, y'all. Without further ado, let's jump into this conversation. What's up, Cerebral Football fans? My name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. So to begin with, let's just rip the bandaid off and talk about why people want to add Derrick Henry. And I think if you take the name away, I think that's the contentious point with a lot of us. It's like, come on, man. Like, we can't go back to the Titans for a third time and absolutely fleece them for an all-pro level player. You just can't keep doing that. With that said, if you take the name away from Derrick Henry and you talk about the aspects of his game that people are loving and wanting here in this Philadelphia Eagles offense, I think the evaluation makes a lot more sense to what they're trying to get to. You're looking for a guy who can sustain contact. You want a guy that can be a complimentary to DeAndre Swift. And that's where really and honestly, like my first, I'm not too sure about this fit thing kind of comes into play right away, which is when you look at their attempts on the season and where DeAndre Swift and where Derrick Henry rank, Derrick Henry has the ninth most carries on the season at 98. And that trails DeAndre Swift's 101, which are seventh overall. Who's the primary back if you add Derrick Henry? Derrick Henry is a Pro Bowl player. Derrick Henry's had multiple 1,500-yard seasons inside of his career. That's a tough situation to, to bring a guy in like Derrick Henry and just say, like, look, man, you're going to get a chance to, to compete for a Super Bowl if you just role play and you play second fiddle or if you play 1B to the 1A. I don't know. I mean, we're taking guesses here, guys. I can't sit here and say that I know where his thought process is, but there's reason to doubt he'd take that role, guys. Yards per attempt on the season. Derrick Henry ranks 36th overall with a 4.3 yards per attempt marker, which does trail DeAndre Swift's 17th overall ranking in 5.1 yards per attempt on the season. I will say that different style running backs, different ways that they're being implemented, different volume of handoffs. So there's, there's some complexity to just looking at yards per attempt. Total yards after contact. Derrick Henry has the seventh most total yards after contact in the NFL with 306, which does lead DeAndre Swift's 14th overall in 263 in total yards. When you break this up by attempt, though, you have the 29th rusher in the NFL in Derrick Henry with 3.12 yards per attempt in terms of after first initial contact, which does lead DeAndre Swift's 61st overall 2.6 yards per attempt after the first initial contact. So I will say, like, if you're just judging this based upon, like, can you plug in a big physical running back that can come in, sustain contact, and push the pile? Like, yeah, Derrick Henry's a guy that, you know, I mean, he's been sustaining these hits for many years, which will cause concern for some people, but I definitely get, like, the thought process to say, like, this guy would complement an explosive running back like, you know, DeAndre Swift really, really well. Yeah, if you're not talking about a Pro Bowl player who's, you know I'm saying, a primary featured back, I can get it because I think if you add these two type of runners to your offense, you have to become like kind of a primary run-centered offense in order to get the most production out of Derrick Henry to be able to use that combo to its full potential, right? And that's tough to do when you only have one football and you still have A.J. Brown who just set, you know, an NFL record for 125-yard-plus receiving games in a conse- you know, consecutively. And then you got Devontae Smith, you got Dallas Goddard. I mean, then you got those two running backs if you add them. Derrick Henry, DeAndre Swift. I mean, it becomes tough, guys. There's one football here. I think what surprised me, though, when I really looked at Derrick Henry, when I studied what was going on in the season with Derrick Henry, because I'm not overly familiar with the Titans, he hasn't been as productive down in the red zone as you would think a guy of his size would be. On the season, in terms of rushing attempts and what we would call the full red zone. So if you just hit inside the red zone on stat head, guys, it's going to filter you from the 19-yard line to the 1-yard line. I like to go in there and just plug it in from the opponent's 20-yard line to the 1-yard line and get the full red zone. Derrick Henry has 13 carries for 29 yards at 2.23 yards per attempt average, two touchdowns, and three first downs on the season. I'm not saying that's bad. And depending on where your handoffs are coming from, that yards per attempt thing can be misleading. Also, situationally, like if it's third and one, if it, you know, there's situations that could skew that kind of detail. But if you compare that to DeAndre Swift, who we already have been saying isn't getting enough handoffs inside the red zone, 
Well, DeAndre has 19 carries for 60 yards, a 3.16 yards per attempt marker, three touchdowns, and then an additional five first downs on the season inside the red zone. And if we look at the low red zone, that's where we would really probably want Derrick Henry because I think that's where you can get into, you know, the points that my guy, Mr. Sandman, was making on our Saturday live stream where he said, you know, Gate, I'd really like to see the offense get under center more in the red zone and give teams a little different look. I think when you're inside the 10-yard line, specifically inside the 5, that's where you're clearly going to be under center more than you're probably going to be in shotgun and running situations or trying to really draw the eyes of the defense and give them a look that they're not expecting. So that's where I think you can make the case that, like, you know, if you remove Derrick Henry's name and just use the attributes, you know, the attributes we're talking about, that's where things could get interesting, I think. However, on the season, like I said, the numbers surprised me. He only has two carries for 13 yards, but six and a half yards per attempt. He doesn't get the ball that often, but boy, those two handoffs went for six and a half yards on average, which is a pretty good marker, right? No touchdowns, no first downs. He's actually run the ball less inside the 10-yard line than even DeAndre Swift, who actually has four carries for 13 yards. Interesting, the 13-yard marker there for both players. 3.25 yards per attempt, no touchdowns, no first downs. And to be honest, This is kind of complex because when you break this down, you're talking about a very, very small sample size of football. If you had to take a guess who leads the NFL in rushing inside the 10-yard line, who do you think it is? Saquon Barkley with eight rushing attempts. So we're talking about halfway through the season, we're talking about less than 10 rushing attempts inside this area for running backs. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying, guys? It's a little tricky here, to be honest. When you're looking at the role, you're you're truly looking for a role player here. You got to be a little careful is what I'm saying. And as disappointed as we are with the lack of use of DeAndre Swift in the red zone at times, his four runs, his four handoffs inside of the 10-yard line actually ranks inside the top 10. He's tied in a big three-, four-way tie for 10th overall in terms of actual attempts inside the 10-yard line. Still think that there's situations where he needs to play more down in the red zone, to be quite honest. Would you be getting prime Derrick Henry? I don't know. It's tough to say, guys. I mean, 2019-2020 was like prime Derrick Henry. This is the type of stuff he was doing back then, guys. This young man had 1,605 yards after contact and 4.16 yards uh, per attempt after the first initial contact on the 2019 season. That's a heck of a lot of numbers there, guys. And 2020, he had 1,525 yards after initial contact and 3.85 if you break it down per attempt. That's a lot of yards after contact. Even last year in 2022... This young man had 1,257 yards after initial contact, which is less than what he had in 19 and 20, but led the league. Something he didn't necessarily lead the league in the 19 and 20. And then he had 3.6 yards per attempt in terms of after first initial contact. I don't know that Derrick Henry's cooked, man. I disagree with some of the people that have that narrative. With that said, there is an analytics evaluation to running backs. And when you get over 1,000 career attempts, which Derrick Henry clearly has at this point in his career— the wide information that is at our disposal tells us that those running backs, generally speaking, have a trajectory that goes down. Now, here's the tough part. That's true with 90 to 95% of players. But I guess the question you have to get to is, what do you do when you're dealing with an outlier? Derrick Henry's already proven to be an outlier against that analytic. How much longer can he remain an outlier to that analytic? Like, it's tough, guys. I don't have the answer for that. I'm just stating some very obvious things here. And then last but not least, I have to ask myself, is he willing to accept the role here in Philadelphia? Would DeAndre Swift cause a stir if he now became a 1B instead of a 1A? Like, I don't know the inner chemistry here. I know that A.J. Brown would love to have this guy here. I know that Jalen Hurts would love to have this guy here. I know that he would clearly make the Eagles a better football team. There's no doubt about that. I just think when you look at the contract situation, when you look at the roles, when you look at the factors only one football, you look at the analytics behind getting over 1,000 carries— It's a lot, guys. It's a lot. I don't think that this is likely to happen. I would be on here celebrating just like the rest of you if it does happen later today. I have my doubts. It's almost as I just, I have my doubts about this working out, guys. All right. I appreciate y'all's time and attention, and I'll see y'all in the next video.